guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we'll be talking about my March audiobook wrap-up. Just in case you missed it, I posted my March reading wrap-up yesterday. I'll put the link for it up here in the cards. You can click that little I to check it out. I only read three books physically, but I listened to, I think, nine or ten books on audio, so I had a really great audiobook month, especially this later part, and I enjoyed quite a bit of them. So because I have so many, we're just going to dive right in. So first up, I listened to Storm Siren by Mary Webber. This one is narrated by Christine Stevens. It was recommended this one by a friend. So this is about basically witches that have elemental style magic and kind of truth witch vibes, I guess. I haven't read truth, truth witch yet, but that's what I'm kind of guessing at. So this is about our main character who is a slave. Her elemental magic like witches are usually only born male and they're usually killed at birth so technically she shouldn't exist and then basically people find her and decide to use her for something. I didn't love the narrator for this one. I think that was the main problem that I had. She just was very monotone and I feel like she didn't have a lot of range unfortunately. Or It was very much an older YA narrator style. I have trouble more with the older YA books on audio because I just feel like the narrators aren't as good, unfortunately. I had two friends reading this one and both DNF'd it. I can understand why. It was just kind of weird and the narrator was so bad. I kept going. I did kind of like the twist and things at the end, so let me know if you guys have read this one and that will determine whether I carry on or not because I'm kind of on the fence right now. About a three star read, so I liked it, but I didn't really love it. And I buddy read Legend by Marie Lu with my friend Brittany who has a channel called Books by Brit. I'll link down below. And this is the first in a dystopian trilogy, a very beloved dystopian trilogy. Sorry, <laughs> it's kind of shiny with my light. The narrators for this are Mariel Stern and Stephen Kaplan. I like dystopian books, so let's just kind of preface that for the most part. I enjoy them, especially if I don't listen to too many at once. So you're following two main characters. Our main character, June, is born into a wealthy family and a wealthy like military family, and she is being trained and groomed for war and certain things in the military. And then we're following our lead character, Day, who is not well off, and is the country's most wanted criminal for various reasons. And then they kind of wind up meeting up. So I actually really enjoyed this one. I felt like it was a fairly typical dystopian, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, you kind of have the governmental takeover aspect, but it had some unique aspects to it as well. And I just really enjoy Marie Lu's writing style. So this one was probably around a 3.5 star for me, but I will continue on with the series and see where they go because they had a pretty decent cliffhanger at the end of this one. Sorry, I had to turn off my light because it was just too shiny for all this. So sorry for the lighting change. Then I finished the Starbound trilogy with Their Fractured Light by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This one is narrated by Kim My Guest and McLeod Andrews. This is a space sci-fi star-crossed lovers space opera trilogy. So Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner do a lot of writing together and then Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff do some writing together all kind of sci-fi based as well. This was my first endeavor into their works like together. So the first book follows one story and one set of characters. The second book follows a new set of characters and this one follows a new set but then they all kind of intertwine kind of similar to Illuminae because it's in the same world and it follows the same timeline but you're getting different perspectives. The first book was a four star for me. The second book was like a three star and this one was probably a 3.5. I enjoyed it as a whole but not as much as I have enjoyed some of my other sci-fi and space reads and I didn't love it as much as I thought I would because I love Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner's writing style and everything overall. I felt like they could have used a little bit more humor or like snarky type characters in here to kind of balance out the drama and the romance. Um, there is a lot of romance and I did like I enjoyed especially the first part of this one quite a bit. I'm kind of on the fence about what, whether or not to keep them because I just love sci-fi books and I love like the covers and everything but overall not one of my favorite favorites but still really enjoyable so I would still recommend it. There are going to be like a lot of sci-fi and space books on this list because I 
at the end of the month started doing space and galaxy readathon and also I had already been reading too like before I started that so I just wanted to explain why there's so much on here. <laughs> so then I reread Earth Girl by Janet Edwards because this was available on Hoopla for the first time on audiobook and I read this one like three or four years ago and absolutely loved it so I have been wanting to like reread it for a really long time. So the narrator for this one is Catherine Luttrell who did a really really great job. So this is just such a unique trilogy that nobody talks about and I love it so much. So this one is set basically we have figured out how to travel to different planets and transport there but there are some of us that can't survive the journey for a certain reason. There's like a gene or something that happens and basically they'll they'll die on the way to another planet. They have to stay on Earth and they're considered handicapped. Parents will wind up leaving their kids on Earth and going to other planets because the majority of society is now going to other planets and other dimensions. And so there's like a foster system in place. The foster parents have to take care of the kids but really it's they're like all in a foster system together and then they have a foster parent that kind of checks in with them like once a week or so and they're kind of looked down upon uh by society as having like a handicapped and being like lesser than all that kind of jazz so this is set in 2700 and so there's a lot of advanced technology and things in here this is a dense little book it's only like 270 pages so we're following our main character jara who's considered one of the handicaps that can't travel to other planets and she has a lot of like uh, upset and anger around that because she doesn't know who her real parents are and why they left her and she's really upset with the quote-unquote normal society. I can't remember what she calls them. She has a name for them and she thinks that they're all terrible basically because she thinks that they don't like her and she winds up coming of age and being able to pick what she wants to do for schooling and she winds up doing something for school that involves her having to interact with a lot of the normal people and she kind of has to conceal her identity as a handicapped earthling and it is just so fascinating and so charming the romance is adorable jara is one of my all-time favorite characters she is feisty and she is smart and she is funny and she is flawed but like so lovable at the same time this has a lot of weird language and words in it because it's set in the future but if you can kind of hang in there you get used to it and you wind up really loving it it's just such a unique series as a whole and it's the only true utopian series that i have ever read overly dark or anything like that like space and things that we've done and advanced and all these cool technology things but it's explained like really easily and not confusing it's just really neat, tell, detailed and really neat. One of my all-time favorites, so of course I gave it five stars again. Then I squeezed in The, the Encourageable Children of ha Ashton Place, The Mysterious Howling, which is book one. This one is narrated by Katherine Kelgren, who is one of my favorite, favorite narrators. She has a beautiful British accent, and this one is kind of like a weird, it's kind of a twist, like Mary Poppins meets like Miss Mer Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children meets like I don't know. It's just really, really adorable middle grade series. So the audiobook is super, super short. So the incorrigible children of Ashton Place were discovered in the woods. And it's basically like a twist on kids being raised by wolves. And we have our main character, Penelope Lumley, and she is assigned to this manor to raise the children and teach them how to be proper. And of course, they have all these weird traits and things because they have been raised by wolves and she didn't know that until she got there. They haven't actually been raised by wolves, I don't think. At least I don't know yet but they're very wild and unmannered and uncivilized and she kind of has to teach them that. And so this is a long series. I think it's like a 12 book series um, all about their adventures and it's adorable and very cute and I wound up giving it four stars. Then I also squeezed in Flunked by Jen Kalonita. This is the fairy tale reform school series. Again, another middle grade. This one has a slightly older vibe to it than the mysterious one is almost like a chapter book, but this is like a solid middle grade. I think she's like 14 or 15. So this is set in a fairy tale world with Cinderella and Sleepy Beauty and all those things. And I think Cinderella is like in charge of the kingdom. And there are a lot of things that are going well, a lot of things that aren't going well. And our lead character is kind of a rebel. She feels like they're not getting treated fairly by the government and different things. Like her dad is a shoemaker and he is the one who created Cinderella's slipper. But then the fairy godmother like kind of took the rights for that and just makes them on her own so they don't get the money for it and so they're kind of 
not doing the greatest and so she winds up like stealing things to like feed her family and her siblings and because of that she winds up having to go to fairy tale reform school which is run by like the villains of all of our fairy tales who have been reformed and she has to go to a boarding school with all these like rambunctious kids and ex-villains and it's very fun and it has a great school setting and I really really enjoyed it. I've been meaning to get to this for a while. Kind of school of good and evil uh, esque but a little bit more simple and fast paced and so yeah I really enjoyed it. It is narrated by Kristen Condon. She did a decent job. It wasn't like my all-time favorite narration but um, I did really enjoy it and I probably will continue on with the series so this one was like a 3.5 star. Okay so just two more. So then at the very end of the month on the 29th I started the, it's technically the Buzz word -thon for the month of April and their theme was space but I've kind of taken it <laughs> and made it my own thing because I'm going to do it for two weeks and I started early and I have all these different things I'm doing so we're calling it galaxy -a -thon, and we're going to do it probably again later in the year with a bunch of different like challenges and stuff. So I read The Final Six was my first pick by Alexandra Munir. This is part of a duology. I'm meaning to get to it for a while. This one's narrated by Alexandra Munir herself and James Fui, who is a fantastic narrator. They did a really, really great job. Basically, our Earth is not doing well. It's gotten taken over by tsunamis and waves and like a bunch of people have been wiped out and so the government has spent all of their money into funding like a NASA expeditions to find like a way to live somewhere else. And so they wind up picking 24 teens that are highly skilled in some area to basically be trained to go and live and see if they can inhabit a Jupiter's moon. They pick six out of that 24 with different skills and things to be sent to the moon to basically see if we can live there. It has to be a teen because I guess there's some kind of uh, bacteria or something like that that we can't survive if we're older or something like that, they want young, healthy people. Of course, it just needs to be teen because it's YA. And so you're following two different characters. Leo is from Italy, I believe, and then Naomi is from Los Angeles in America. And so they each have different reactions to getting chosen and getting sent there and different backstories and things like that. And so you're following them through space camp. This entire thing is set on Earth, but the very ending they're getting ready to go to the moon and you find out who got picked and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was great. I loved it. The ending had a great, great twist and I'm going to start the next book here very soon. So this one was a solid four stars. And then the last book that I read, Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. I actually buddy read this one with my friend Brittany. It was so fun. A good job like kind of keeping up with each other. So the narrators for this are Nate Be Begel and Casey Lee Hazinga. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And this one, it was so neat. It was a very, very space and sci-fi driven. So we have two main characters. Like one is from a planet that has like a certain mission and she has a bunch of different things that happened in her past. I'm doing a bad job describing this. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then our other character is actually an advanced AI, like a boy, robot boy that is very, very advanced that has been by himself on a spaceship for 30 years kind of just waiting for somebody to come and find him and she winds up finding him and they wind up having to team up together because whoever the human is he's in contact with first he winds up having to like become their servant or whatever but he's very advanced and he gets more advanced as the books goes on there's a great romance in here there is a lot of space-esque things they have to go to different planets for different things and it's really really great if you like sci-fi you will really love this one i love claudia gray's writing style at first i wasn't sure about the narrators but they really grew on me the more i listened to it and it was really fantastic. So I wound up giving this one four stars. Overall, I had a super great audiobook month and a pretty good reading month as well. And it's looking pretty good for April as well. Let me know if you've read any of these down below in the comments and what you think of them and what else you have read for the month of March. I'm curious to know, do you guys like audiobooks as well? And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time on the bright side. Bye.